You all uh, know Charles Wagle that wrote that song. He, uh, he got saved and, and his wife didn't want any part of it. She left him. And through the heartache of leaving that and him finding Christ his Savior, Christ made all the difference. And he wrote that song. I, uh, I think about it. I've got him on record singing that song at home uh, when he was, uh, I don't know how old he was, but his voice is broken and everything. But uh, every once in a while I find it and, and uh, uh, play it, you know. Well, just for your information, I am the substitute for the substitute. <laughs> Jacob is supposed to be preaching. But due to circumstances, our pastor, he, um, he has a habit of teasing me a lot about a lady, a certain lady. He, he just won't quit. So the chickens always come home to roost. So what I want you to do when the pastor comes back, you just ask him how he is at emailing. Just ask him. See what he says. I'm not going to say any more. If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 17. I thought as Brian was preaching this morning, I thought he was going to preach what, uh, I, I don't know how long I've had this. Uh, uh, one day I was sitting there and, and just kind of hit me and I got up and, and wrote out a sermon and and everything, I was going to use it for Sunday school or something and, and uh, everything. And so when he started preaching to consider, I thought, man, he hasn't got my notes. No, it's not like mine, but it's, it, you know, uh, uh, a little bit. Mine is uh, questionable things, questionable things. I wonder how often... Do we stop? We, we talk about getting up and asking the Lord what, what uh, he wants today. How often do we stop and, and, and ask ourselves certain questions about our lifestyle? And that's, I'd like to go through a few tonight. Let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, you know I'm nervous. But Lord, you know my heart. You know, Lord, I want to glorify you. Not anybody else, not myself. Help me, Lord. Open our hearts to the word of God. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 2. And verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I ask the question, and, and, and I, I asked myself, I, I, uh, I was sitting there this afternoon and I thought, God, this is for me. So I wrote on the top, for me. God never gives us anything that, that it doesn't apply. And I, I thought, man, these hit me, some of these hit me right. And I asked the question, Am I fully convinced the truth of the Word of God? <clears throat> Pastor and I was talking the other day, and we was talking about some things. He came out to see Heather, and, and we was talking, and, and they was talking about not understanding some things. And, and I said, Pastor, I don't understand how God created the world out of nothing. Do you understand that? 
In my mind, that's impossible. But by faith, I know he did. But I don't understand it. So some things we don't understand. Do we really? You know, when we believe something good enough, well enough, strong enough, we, we will pursue it. We will uh, uh, go after it. How, how, how much, how, how diligently do we follow the truth of the Word of God? We need to check. I think, I think this ought to be a daily checklist. We need to check our lives and to see uh, if we're following some of God's commandments or all of God's commandments. I just like to name a few, you know. How's our prayer life? Are you getting your prayers answered? Am I getting my prayers answered? How's your prayer life? How are we praying? You know, it's easy for some. I don't like to pray in public, personally. But it's easy to to say words. Easy to say words. And, and but, but what, how deep are they? How deep is, is, is what's coming out of your mouth? How deep? Oh, we can be, you know, I, uh, no, I won't say that. Uh, but just how deep is it? How about your confession? How often do you use 1 John 1, 9? Well, I don't need 1 John 1. Yes, you do. All of us do. All of us do. How many times in a day do we, do we get off track of, of doing what God wants us to do or acting as God wants us to act? How about our confession? Now, on this, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Savior, the only prayer God will listen to from the unbeliever is a prayer of faith of asking him to be their Savior. God doesn't listen to the prayers of unbelievers. And God doesn't listen to the prayers of confession of unbelievers. You must realize you're not in the family of God if you have not trusted Christ. You are of your father, the devil, the Bible says. And the things that he does, we do. You know, we, we, get, we get off track so easy uh, of, of, of looking at people and saying, oh my, look what they're doing. They're only doing what comes natural. That's their nature. That's our nature. And without Jesus, we'd be doing the same things. We need to realize it's only by the grace and the power of God and, and the leadership of the Holy Spirit can we live a life that is pleasing to God. Amen. No other way. And so we, we need to quit I'm not talking about condoning sin, but we need to quit looking at people in, in, in the wrong way. Jesus looked at the woman, woman caught in adultery and said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He didn't condone the sin, but he had compassion for her. He had love for her. He had concern for her. What about witnessing? What about witnessing? How often do we, do we, do we really, do we really want to witness? Or, or do we really, I, I've said it so many times, when you get hungry enough to tell somebody about Jesus, God will send you a, a somebody by. Happens all the time. We just don't get hungry very often or often enough. Do you, do you ever get discouraged maybe in, in thinking, you know, I, I've often thought, I wonder, and, 
if, if passing out tracts is doing any good. And I, I, I told the pastor, I said, sometimes I, I hate to say things because you, you think you don't want people to think you're bragging on yourself or something. And, and I, I don't want that, of course. I had an experience the other day. Jimmy and I went to the lumber yard and, and I was talking to Joe Davis up there and we were just talking about the Lord and praising the Lord and, and uh, everything. And, and uh, Joe said, well, here, he called this boy's name. It was standing there. He works up there. He called his name and said, hey, he got saved and joined the church, baptized and worked in the church, just, just loving the Lord. And the young man walked up and said, well, sir, I know you. You give me a track over a year ago how to get to heaven from Missouri. And you talk to me about the Lord. And I thought, well, hallelujah. Praise God. They do work <laughs> when God wants them to. And I think my son, he said, he said man, we got in the truck, he said something about uh, he had a blessing out of it too. I think he'd been, he'd been praying and asking God to give him a sign that tracks were working. So we both got a blessing out of it and he shook, the young man shook my hand and thanked me, you know. Praise God. Praise God. How about our love for others? How about our love for others? How do we look at, at people? I've got a, a lady down in Columbia living in the wrong lifestyle. The sweetest lady you ever want to be around. The most generous lady you ever want to be around. Do anything in the world for you. How do we, how do we, I don't like what she's doing, but God has given me a love for that person, has given me once an opportunity to give her a track. I, I, want, I want her to know I care that one of these days God will give me the opportunity when he's ready to witness to her, to witness to her. How deep is our love for Jesus? I tell you, it's demonstrated by how much we love others. Others. Now, I'll probably cry on this one, but that's okay. Just stay with me. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. I was going to do something else, but I won't do that. There's only one person alive that knows something that happened 60 years ago. But I had three kids, and I think Janice, the youngest one, was about three or maybe four. And I fell into sin. And I was advised not to tell my wife by two or three people, but I couldn't, I couldn't hold it from her. I told my wife, it's God's my witness. My wife forgave me like Jesus did. She forgave me and buried it in the deepest sea that she knew how. Never once, never once did she ever mention it in 60 years after that. She saved our marriage by her forgiveness. She probably saved my life by her forgiveness. Oh, people, don't you ever, don't you ever harbor unforgiveness 
as a Christian because you're not going to ever really find true happiness, true contentment in life. Never. How much do we... I got through that without crying very much. I'm, I'm, thank you, Lord. Usually when I talk about my wife, I, I, I cry. I, uh, I go by and look at all the pictures in the house. and I have my little tears, you know, and, and I say hi. And, and uh, I'm not one talks to dad, but uh, I, I say hi and honey, I love you. And uh, uh, everything. Are the things that I'm, I'm doing under the Lord, what, what is my motive? What is my motive? Ask yourself. And I, th I think this ought to be a checklist. Ask yourself. Is it for the preacher? Is it for friends? For a boss? For any other reason than the Lord? What is our, what is our motive? It is so easy. We are such a... And... That's the reason I say it for me. We are such a prideful people. It is so easy to want to take credit instead of giving God the credit. Look at First Peter, if you will, just a second. We'll jump around some verses here on some of these. My uh, First Peter chapter five. My uh, good friend, uh, my good friend over there with the beard over there, sitting them two little girls, Thomas. He kind of hurt my feelings. He said, I told him I only had six points. He said, well, 30 minutes a point would be out in three hours. <laughs> kind of like I'm long-winded, you know. I, you know, it really hurt my feelings, but I, I guess I'll forgive him and got, get over it. Chapter, First Peter chapter 5, if you will, please. Uh, if I can find it, uh, verse uh, 5 and 6. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding? You want to follow that? Oh, that hurts. And be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Folks, as you've heard our pastors say and Brother Stenson say, we're just dirt put together by God, a master planner. We're nothing. But He's everything. He is everything. And we need to realize what our motive is. Ask yourself this question. Will my life Stand the test at the judgment seat of Christ. Will my life stand the test at the judgment seat of Christ? We can fool a lot of people a lot of the time. Some of the people all the time. But there'll be no excuses at the judgment seat of Christ. And every believer, every person that names the name of Christ, every person that has accepted Jesus Christ will have to stand at the judgment seat and give an account of what they've done. 
And you'll not be able to say, well, Lord, no, no, no. You won't be able to say anything. Look at 2 Corinthians, if you did it well, just a second. Chapter 5. Verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, I've heard some people say, Well, you don't want to work for rewards. Well, I do. I want to please my Lord and, and, and earn some rewards. I want to I want to be over to that that fifty at least, and and Thomas being one of them, I want to be over that because I'm going to give him a hard time. He just picks on me all the time. You know? I'm only kidding, Thomas. I love you. What what is our desire? What are we What are we here for? What are we living for? And and Brian made this so clear this morning. The truth will come out. Why not? Why are we so hard-headed and so stubborn and so, pardon me, but stupid that we won't get it right now and still wait until we have to cry and bawl our head off at the judgment seat of Christ? Because we didn't take care of it here on this earth and on this life. Anybody that harbors any bitterness, any animosity towards another person, I guarantee you, when you look at Jesus, and he said, why didn't you forgive that person? You just lost a a crown or whatever. You're going to bawl your eyes out. I'm going to bawl my eyes out. It's not going to be funny. And it's not going to be hidden. It's going to come out. Why not take care of it now? Why go through life? Why go through life miserable because you refuse to do what the Bible says? Jesus said, as you've done it unto these little ones, you've also done it to me. So why don't we, why don't we get it right? We, we need to check. Well, we already know, I think, if we just would listen to see how Jesus treated people. Can you imagine... Can you imagine loving those that whipped him with the cat of nine tails? Can you imagine loving those that drove nails in his hands and his feet? Can you imagine a man like Polycarp, I believe was his name, when he backed up to the stake to be tied when he was going to be burnt by the At the stake. By God's grace, he said, I'll stand. I'll stand. And he loved those people and forgave those people. Can you imagine Stephen being stoned? People biting on him with their teeth. And forgiving them. Folks, we need to check our life. Am I caught another one, number four? I'm already on four, Thomas. Am I caring or causing others to stumble? Think about it. I, I know pastors refer to George Bailey. I watched It's a Wonderful Life last night. 
I guess I'm not ashamed. I sat there and cried. And I thought, man, how many lives have I, I guess it was convicting the reason I cried. How many lives has been changed because of the way I live? How many lives have been inspired? How many lives? Or how many, how many lives have stumbled? How many people have stumbled because of the way I live? Something we need to ask ourselves. Something we need to ask ourselves. Look at Romans chapter 14, if you will. And this is a test to see how much we really care. Chapter 14 of the book of Romans in verse 13 said, Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. Oh, that's something we got to be so careful. But judge rather this, that no man put a stumbling, block or a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Look at 1 Corinthians Chapter 8, verse 9. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. You know, we all know, I think it's easier to, it's a lot easier to put a, a rock or something that people stumble over than it is to build a bridge for somebody that comes after us. It's, it's so much easier, the old sin nature we have, and we'll, we'll, we'll fight it back and forth till, till our life stops. But our old nature is so quick to judge and to, to put that stumbling block in, in front of people instead of, instead of trying to uh, uh, show them the way. How much do we care? Verse number five. Am I doing what I do by faith or by pride? By faith or pride? To me, that's a hard question because we have, all have too much pride. Look at Hebrews, if you will, just a minute. Hebrews chapter 11 Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Look at Revelation chapter 2, if you will. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of these, those uh, things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Faithfulness. Why do we do what we do? Do we want a pat on the back? Or do we want to please the one that took our place on the cross? I think it's a question we need to ask ourselves every day. Who am I trying to please? Who am I trying to please? Myself or God? I, uh, I've probably told you this story many times. I was... I, I, my daddy died when I was two years old or two and a half and I, my older brothers and sisters always said my dad was honest. If he told you something, it would, it, that's the way it was. He, was. he was a very honest man. I always wanted to be, even though I never knew him, I never, never remember him at all, I always wanted to be honest like my dad. 
And it was a, a thing, you know, and I got accused of stealing one time. Right here in this church. And it about killed me. But God taught me a very, very valuable uh, he taught me, I can't say the word. I was proud that I was honest. I, did, I didn't realize, I don't think, but I was proud. Boy, he knocked me down like a, 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 with a club. I have not changed about wanting to be honest, but I'm sure lost to being proud about it. God taught me that lesson along in my Christian life. Honesty, pride, destroys so many, so many Christians. I, I, I never will forget uh, things happen in your life, memories, some things I can't remember, nothing. But I remember right out there on the front of the church. And I couldn't tell you who it was, I couldn't tell you his name. But he told me, he said, I've made it. I've whipped the devil. I've made it. Never will forget it. It wasn't no time until the devil whipped him. He, he got out of church. He, I don't know what happened to him. I have no idea. Pride. Any time we think we can fight the devil in our own flesh, out of our own will, Man, you, you're going to get tore up. You're going to get tore up. I like the, which one is it? Oh, the war room where the young lady kicks the devil out of the house and, 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 and in Jesus' name and everything. And uh, uh, we, we, need, we need to do, and the pastor, is, the pastor has said it so many times, Draw an eye to God and he'll draw an eye to you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. And the only way we can do it is we need to draw an eye to God. We need to draw an eye to God. Number six, am I pleasing myself or others? How deep, how deep again does our love for Jesus go? And this will prove how much we really, we can, you know, and if we'd ask anyone here, we'd say they, they'd say we love Jesus. But the proof of it is if we'll keep his commandments. And he says his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not that hard. And they are hard in some ways. Look at, look at, um, Second Peter, if you will, just a moment. Second Peter chapter one. Uh, let's read the first 10 verses. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your, vir your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and that cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling election and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. 
Verse 9 says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and, and, and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. I think, I think as, as Christians, and I've said this many times in Sunday school, I, I think the one thing that helped me in my Christian walk, and, and God knows I'm sure not there, but was that the day that I, I realized that Jim Thomas could commit any sin that's ever been committed, Now think about that. We don't like to admit that. We don't like to admit, but every one of you has the same nature I got. That old Adamic nature, and out of that nature can come any sin that's ever been committed. Now I can stand up here and say, well, I don't think I would ever commit this or that but I know I could in the right circumstance or the wrong time or if I ever get, you know. And, and when you realize this, you, you, you begin to look at people differently. You begin to look at, at that people that are, that are lost and, and, and they're committing sins that, that's destroying them and, and, and they're headed for hell. And you begin to look at them different. Because you realize they're just doing what the old sin nature has the ability to do. Look at Romans, if you will, just a second. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Romans 13, verse 10 says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on, on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in Rioting, drunkenness, and chambering, and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provisions for the flesh to fill the lusts thereof. Man, love worketh no ill, and is a fulfilling of the law of God's commandments. Love covereth all sins. Love, love. How do you want to say it? Love in, endures. Love, uh, uh, love loves in, in spite of what people do. And folks, you, can, you can't separate this unless you know Jesus Christ and, and the Holy Spirit gives you the power to do it. You can't do it in yourself. I, I, um, I remember working at the filling station and, and, and drunks would come in and and, and I hate alcohol with a passion, uh, and, but I could not separate it from hating the person that was drinking it until I got saved and realized I, I'm not supposed to hate the person, just, just the alcohol. And only God can give us that power to do that. I think we all could and should check our daily lives and see if we measure up to what God's Word says. Love is a powerful thing. We can, it's not just a word, it's easy to say I love you. But love is an action. Love produces something. 
Love goes beyond just words. Love caresses when it's not easy. Love puts up with when it's not easy things. Love is God. He loved me while I was a yet sinner and still am a sinner saved by grace, but God loved me. Not because of what I do or what I did or who I am. He loved me in spite of that. But God, because he is God, also has another side. A side that demands judgment. And that's why Jesus had to come and die on the cross. Because if he didn't, every human being would be in hell. Every human being would go to hell. But Jesus took our place on the cross. And now, even though I'm still a sinner saved by grace, when God the Father looks down, he sees me wrapped in the righteousness of Christ. Now that ought to make a Baptist smile. I don't want to make a Baptist shout a little bit. Man, the Father don't look at me as the dirty old sinner that I am. He looks at me because of Christ, his son. Should not we give him our all? Should not we follow his commandments? Should not we love each other? Should not we forgive each other? Should not we witness? Should not we pray? Should not we follow this blessed book that so many people are denying, but it's proven itself to be true? Everything it said has come except the prophecies that are to come have, have been prophesied in the book. History proves that it's pr true. I think it's time we wake up. America's going to hell in a handbasket, so as the old saying goes. And it's not popular to talk about Jesus. But let's talk about him anyway, whether it's popular or not. It's kind of sad and, and kind of amusing sometimes when I'll make <clears throat> remarks about Jesus and the look on people's face at the market, you know, I, I, uh, and, and everything. And I like to say it's, it's kind of funny in a way, not, but not funny either. It's sad sometimes. And then once in a while I'll say something and, and somebody will say, hey, you're right. And they'll say they're a Christian too. And we have a wonderful rapport with each other. Let's all stand, if you will. Heavenly Father, as we come to the close of service tonight, Lord, I pray that thy spirit might touch each of our hearts. Lord, I try to do what you want me to do. Lord, I pray. Calvary Baptist Church congregation might examine our own lives each day. Lord, we might follow the commandments, the teaching in this Word of God. Lord, if there's someone here this morning or tonight hasn't been saved, you've never trusted Christ, please don't leave without Him. Lord, I pray you just touch hearts. If there's unforgiveness, help that one to forgive. We ask it all in Jesus' name.